Welcome to day 118 of our BU 365 day challenge to do one thing every day that improves us. Our focus on spiritual well-being this segment, this month of April. Today we're going to talk about how our focus on spirituality and spiritual well-being interacts with all the other areas and aspects of the, I call it the life framework nine, the LF nine, because we talk about nine different areas and aspects of our life. And we want to think about how our spirituality is influenced by our physical, emotional, mental, spiritual relationships, contributions, financial communication, and confidence. We want to think about how all of those interact with one another. And we'll talk about that in a minute, but I like to show this diagram because to me, I was sitting one day and explaining it to someone and I'm like, well, this is how the life framework really works. I mean, we think it's this nice list of Mine was originally seven in 2021. I added uh, confidence and communication. Nine things. We think it's this nice list of things that we can set our goals by and do all these things. But it's really this interconnected web of relationships where everything impacts and has an influence on everything else. So let's think about our spiritual life and some of the areas and aspects and how they interact. And then today our challenge is going to be our, our action item is to think about what one connection, what two areas of the life framework, meaning spiritual is one, what other area is most important to you right now that you want to spend the most time and energy thinking about as you move forward through the rest of this year and this challenge. So let's look at what's the definition of spiritual health. Spiritual health includes a purposeful life transcendence and actualization of different dimensions and capabilities of the human beings. What the heck does that mean? That means that we all want to be more connected to something outside of ourselves, as well as understanding what makes us tick and what causes us to be motivated or not motivated to do certain things. Uh, we can talk about uh, emotions, spirits and emotions, spirituality and our spirit is communicating with us through our emotions, our connection to a higher power that things that make us human are exhibited through us and our use of emotion. Why? Because other life forms don't demonstrate or even necessarily have the range of emotions that human beings do or the thinking capabilities. So from a spiritual mental standpoint uh, as well, our beliefs are based on our perceptions of reality. Remember, I, I think one of the biggest lessons I've learned is that my reality is only my reality based on my thoughts, my beliefs, my feelings, and my past experiences and the current situation I find myself in. Everybody else has a totally different version of reality because we've all had different experiences. We've all had uh, different perceptions, different ways of looking at things. We've had different beliefs and, and things that and thoughts that we've had the opportunity to experience throughout our lives. So... Whenever I'm in a disagreement with somebody these days, I take a deep breath and I remind myself to try to see things from their point of view, their perspective. And that is a way to more clearly connect with other people. So the, the, actually the area I'm going to work on that is most important to me right now is spirituality and the connection between my spirituality and my physical health. I need to have heart surgery next year. So I thought, okay, I better start paying more attention to my physical well-being, my physical health. And that's very intimately tied to my spirit, my soul, my spirit. We've talked about soul and spirit this month and what they are and what the difference is between them and how, how that all ties into my physical well-being. Because I want to go into that surgery with the best possible chances of it being a successful you know, low impact experience as possible. I've had this surgery before, geez, in 2010, following my sudden cardiac arrest. And it was not a super fun surgery or a super fun recovery time. So this time I would like to have a more positive experience. And I think that involves me tapping into my spirit, my past experiences, my beliefs about health and, and nutrition and everything related to my physical well-being. Uh, how about spirit and relationships, our spiritual interaction with relationships? So a lot of spiritual components to our relationships, right? Uh, our relationship, especially with ourselves. When I think of the spiritual interaction with spiritual, I think of my relationship with myself and myself being 
there's more to me, there's more to you than just what meets the eye. There's more to us than our physical being and that spirit, that soul, that relationship is one that I always want to improve and work on. Uh, also, with respect to relationships, we usually have people involved in our life, either people that we work with or interact with or family members. You know, there are people that don't have family, but they still have acquaintances and friends and interactions. Although COVID's made us feel like we're all alone over the last couple of years, I think that we're starting to reconnect with people. If, if we, for some reason, stop connecting with them uh, remotely, even though we couldn't necessarily connect with them physically. So let's talk about nine quick ways that you can be more spiritually connected with your partner. I found a cool list of this. And I thought, that's a pretty good list. Let's share it. So number one, give more eye contact Be when you're talking with people. And this isn't just your partner. This is with other human beings. When you're communicating with them, actually communicate with them and have eye can contact. Be present. Uh, set up and use your time each day so that you've got time with the people that are important to you. Uh, I make sure I spend physical time and am present with the people I love and care about most every single day if I possibly can. Sometimes I don't see them every single day, but if I don't, then I try to make up for it even more when I, when I do see them. Uh, for example, my one granddaughter, I used to, um, during COVID, I saw her every day uh, during the week because I was her daycare or her homeschooling during COVID. And so uh, it's, I miss her a lot now that she's back in school. And I'm really delighted that she's back in school because I think that was a, a very spiritually negative impact having the kids all not be in school and on masks and on Zoom and things. All right, I digress. Number three, explore what spiritual lessons your partner is teaching you. We, I believe that we interact with people that are here to either show us something about ourselves or show us something about them and that there's lessons to be learned from everybody. And many of those are spiritual lessons. Number four, uh, touch more, touch the people that in, and some people are touchers. Some people aren't, some people are huggers. I am from a family, a long line of huggers. So we are huggers and touchers, I guess. Uh, number five, have meaningful conversations, meaning don't just have surface conversations and superficial conversations really get to know and understand and talk and connect with other people number six uh find ways to laugh together those that laugh together uh, have a much better spiritual connection in life at least in my experience seven uh i cannot read my own writing so i have no idea what it says oh open communication something fully or have open communication i guess eight practice self-love if you love yourself you can love other people if you don't love yourself it's pretty hard to love other people we can only give to other people what we have enough of in our own life and then nine forgive the past hurts because guess what we all mess each other up and hurt one another's feelings a lot of the time inadvertently i thought about this the other day um with uh my daughter i i love my daughter unconditionally and to the end of the earth and sometimes we hurt each other's feelings because we're so familiar that we forget that sometimes we can say things that come off as more harsh than we mean them to uh, so that that's an example of some different areas to think about with respect to spirituality and relationships now spirituality and finance we're going to get into this one deep next month next month we're talking about uh money and our financial well-being our financial health and our financial uh, situations and all kinds of financial topics and spirituality is a big component of that I didn't used to believe that or know that or think that I just thought money was money and it wasn't until I thought about and learned about uh, more about money and finance that I realized that it's got a huge spiritual component why because what we give out in the world is what we give back what we feel about things is what we give back so we want to do things like have, and we'll talk about this so much next month. I don't need to get into it deep here, but um, we want to work to acquire spiritual wealth. And we do that when we uh, develop virtues such as, and I love this list, trustworthiness, truthfulness, assertiveness, compassion, honesty, honor, uh, prayerfulness, etc. When we heal our money problems, when we heal the spiritual hurts and money beliefs and things that we have, 
all of a sudden money flows to us just like everything else. When we uh, think about abundance versus scarcity, it, it shifts everything. When we make that shift, and there's, I've learned over the years little tricks to make that shift on a subconscious level so that we don't fall into scarcity as often as we used to. Now, I'll admit, I still fall into scarcity thinking sometimes and then I just knock myself in the head and I'm like, that is ridiculous. So we'll talk about and work on that one a lot. Uh, what did we miss? Physical, emotional, uh, everything is tied to our emotions, right? And I, I think I mentioned that our spirit is what shows us and helps us feel and experience the different emotions that we have and primarily the positive emotions but it can go both ways right just like everything else we talk about it's depending on what we're looking for and focusing on is what we'll experience and see so it's kind of a meat axe way of discussing the spiritual relationship to all the other different aspects and areas of our life I guess I didn't talk about communication or confidence very much uh, communication is of course uh, how we experience our spirit communicating with us it's going to be different for each and every one of us we talked about that a little bit this month but uh, again we're gonna spend a whole segment a whole month talking about communication and spiritual communication will come up as part of that and we'll go into more detail there um, spiritual confidence it's that unique and almost palpable sense of knowing an absolute belief that you're on the right course, that you're on the right track, you're doing what's right for you, regardless of the external and sometimes internal messages that you're getting. Um, you're, you're tuning into and you are 100% confident in knowing that you're following your own line in the sand. You're doing what you know is right for you. That's why one of my favorite questions is, how does that make you feel? Because if it makes you feel good, or positive or lighter in any way then it's right for you if it if it makes you feel heavy or negative or cringy or bad in any way shape or form then it's not right for you if it makes you worry it's not the right thoughts for you it's not the right spiritual beliefs for you so do what's right for you all right that's it for today have an awesome day action item just share what relationship between spirituality and one of the other nine areas you're going to work on or, or is most important to you right now again i said mine is spiritual and physical spiritual and physical because i want to make sure i have the best relationship and the best connection there possible going forward have an awesome day sorry about the alarm